unpopular opinion, but I hate New Year's resolutions, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know about all of you guys, but for myself, you have that high and that feel good feeling from Christmas and the holidays. And then when you head into the new year, all of a sudden it's like my body realizes, ew, it's still cold and dark outside, but there isn't anything fun to look forward to. So this time of year has always been a little bit of a challenge for me and something that I continue to work on for myself. It is December. It is raining outside instead of snowing. It's not even four o'clock and it is already getting dark. And if those things were not depressing enough, my BFF Christmas tree has had to exit the building already because it was shedding needles all over the place. So bye bye Christmas. Even when they are measurable and achievable and realistic, starting the year with a bunch of predetermined resolutions is still somehow a setup for me for disappointment and letdown. Our goal in the next six weeks is to have the first floor of our home on the inside pretty much wrapped up and completed. It's been about four weeks since I made that statement and told you that goal. And if I'm being really honest, we have not done a whole lot since then. Jonathan's making some dinner. Arlo's supervising. So four weeks ago, I said we were gonna have the house uh, all finished on the inside before we go to Hawaii. How's, how's that going? This would be the point when Jonathan says, I told you so. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. It's important for me to start a new year and give myself every opportunity for success. And so what I have found works a lot better for me is if I choose a short, succinct theme or word or mantra. I used to do the typical New Year's resolution thing. I'm going to eat a lot healthier this year. I'm going to get up early every morning and exercise. The reality of all of those things is that while they are important and I certainly want to incorporate activity and healthy eating into my calendar, I like chocolate <laughs> and I also really like sleep. Telling myself that I need to do it a set amount of times in order to achieve that goal, it just it doesn't work for me. I was gonna ask you something and see if you oh. answer the way I want you to answer. Oh boy. What do I love more than anything else on earth? Sleep. Yes! Yeah, ding, ding, ding. A couple of years ago, I found myself in this cycle of pessimism. Being an optimist is not something that comes naturally for me. I am definitely much more of a realist. So I said, you know what? This year, I want to look at situations as they come to me through an optimist's lens and see what happens. My theme for that year was optimism. I'm not going to pretend like a bunch of magical things happened that year or that every decision I made had that Midas touch and, and turned to gold. No, it was a very typical year, but by viewing situations with optimism, I was able to grow not only as an individual, but I felt myself being a better mom and a better wife and willing to make big and hard decisions because I truly believed, regardless of how hard they were and regardless of what the fallout would be, things were going to be good. So year one was optimism. Year two was last year, and the theme of last year for me was gratefulness. Without tooting my own horn too loudly here, I feel like that is something that I did really, really well this past year. Through every change that my family went through, even when it was a really hard change, like saying goodbye to a house that we had lived in and loved for 10 years, living in a basement without a shower or without a kitchen, buying a house that we knew we were essentially going to have to flip from top to bottom. All of those things are huge challenges and not always fun in the moment, but I was grateful every minute that I had. So we had optimism, we had gratefulness, and that brings us to this year. How I came about my theme for this year is I sat down and I wrote down a couple of bullet points. Personal, home, 
farm, family, school, and channel. I allowed myself a few moments to look at all of those pieces of me and what I wanted this year. I wrote whatever came to mind. Then I tried to tie them all together and find a common thread. I feel like I need a drum roll, but the theme for 2024 is going to be I want this year to be all about figuring out how to grow and how to expand here. Some of that is very obvious, <laughs> maybe getting pigs and chickens and growing a farm, but some of that is a little bit more subtle too. Figuring out how to stay connected and thrive in homeschooling, maintaining consistency with our channel so that we can continue to gain subscribers, growth in all areas. We are getting super close to a thousand. It's really exciting. I want to remove the specificity, remove all of the tasks, and just focus on growing so that in every area of my life, as this year goes on, I can point it back to that theme. Am I growing personally? Am I growing in this farm? And if the answer is yes, then I'm succeeding, even if I haven't checked off a bunch of things. We're getting there. We're getting there. We have a couple weeks. We didn't make the goal. We won't make the goal, but it's all right. What are you barking about over there, po, po, po? I am not saying that you should not set goals or that goals aren't important because goals can be a great tool. If goals or resolutions work for you and that is how you like to set yourself up for the year, awesome. But if you are like me and find that starting a new year can be overwhelming, then maybe Focus on a word. Pick a theme for this year. Pick something that is going to inspire you at the beginning and the end of the day. Maybe for you, your word this year is just joy. When you get to the end of the day, did I find some joy today? If you would like to join me in starting your year with a theme instead of a resolution and you don't know where to start, I would encourage you to start where I started with optimism. When you shift your viewpoint and when you choose to focus on the good, even when things don't look or feel good, you will be amazed at how many aspects of your life can change. If you have made it to the end of the video, I feel like you deserve a special reward. You're going to title this section Life Hacks with Whitney. Jonathan and I like to be really intentional with remembering dates and occurrences that are important to people. I know this sounds like a simple thing, but I am telling you, it will revolutionize your life. Let's say December 29th is a really important day that you need to remember for some reason. Title your event. Highlight all day. Go in to repeat every year. You set your first alert the day before the event and your second alert on the day of the event. You'll get a reminder on your phone the day before saying so-and-so's anniversary is tomorrow. And then on the morning of the anniversary, you get another alert. You text people, you wish them a happy anniversary, you wish them a happy birthday, and they will appreciate it forever. So life hack, do it. Happy New Year! Oh, I just thought something funny. Happy New Year! Or it was loud, so I'm having a bread break. Homemade sourdough. Thank you, Cal. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did it again! Oh, big left handed suck. Get all your noise out. Alright, silence, everyone. YouTube channeling. 101. Do not wait until the last minute to make your videos. No time like the present, I suppose. Booger check. <laughs>